thing. You see women at the bar all the time where a man approaches her and she is constantly playing this power play game of breaking rapport. Men are confused because they don't know what game they're in. Women tend to be really good at breaking rapport in that particular dynamic. But then when it comes to the corporate world, men tend to understand that game. It's just a matter of knowing the framework and being able to put it in your toolbox and take it out whenever you need it. If you like to win and come out victorious, then just watch the whole video until the very end because it's crucially important for you to follow all of the steps in order to get to the end goal, which is something being in your favor instead of the other person's favor. Hopefully it's a win-win situation. Step number one is to set your foundation. A method of breaking rapport to win in a power dynamic only works if either you have already built a certain amount of rapport or you have a perceived desired value. Quickly going into building rapport, I made a lot of videos on how to build rapport, but it could be anything from verbal rapport or to body language rapport. If this is something that you're interested in, I'll link some videos down below to help you out. But essentially, when you are in sync with somebody and you feel that you're on the same page, that's when you know you've built rapport. Another dynamic, like I mentioned, is to have a perceived desired value. You. This is very obvious in let's say a dating scene. If a woman is simply at a bar, she already has a perceived desired value to the man who is seeking her. The difference is that she needs to have a perceived desired value of that guy as well in order for the power play to start working. So this is just something to keep in mind. One person might have that perceived desired value, but if you don't have it as well, you have to build rapport. Perceived desired value could be a skill. Usually this is in a business setting, an asset. This is a business or personal or something intangible. It's an intangible skill or asset and under that, this could be social attention. You see this a lot in celebrities. It could be a social influence. This is seen a lot in sales or in business or social intimacy. You see this a lot in interpersonal relationships, friends, family, etc. Just remember that this is a perceived value or desire. There's people who would build themselves up. Oftentimes you'll see this in men who has a nice tailored suit. Just know that with every individual person, it is going to be different. That's why the safest way is to simply build rapport. Moving on to step number two is as soon as you see that there's a rapport built, you want to break rapport. You want to break it right away. There are two main ways to break rapport. This is verbal and with body language. So within verbal, you can say no. You can ask for something that's completely unreasonable or you can be in disagreement. Tonality is another good one for verbal. So maybe you are speaking in uptones. So, hey, how are you? And then all of a sudden you are ending your sentences in downtones. No, I won't do that right? So you're going lower. That's a really good one because it's a lot more subtle than actively saying no or actively disagreeing. When it comes to body language, you can look away. So breaking eye contact, leaning back, creating physical space between you and the other person, body blocks. Body blocks are very interesting because you can do it with your own physical body. Oftentimes you'll see people cross their arms, right? Or cross their legs when their legs weren't crossed. You can also do hand body blocks, but you can also do object body blocks. They might stand behind a podium or you go behind the desk. So there's an object between you and the other person. That's also a body block. Facial indicators. Facial indicators are great because you just see it all the times in very tense situations where you can't be too physical. So it could be anything as simple as a little contempt smirk. It could be that you were smiling just a second before and all of a sudden you drop your smile. And now that you've broken rapport either verbally or with your body language, there are other ways, but those are the main ways that you can go ahead and do. Now you are entering the game. <laughs> And the game is a lot of fun if you are playing with it. And the only reason why it would be fun is because you just see this as a game. Sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. But at the end of the day, you are just playing around. And with any game, if you want to win, you have to know the rules. So here are the rules of the game, which goes into step number three. You want to sync 
and disengage. This is the reason why it's very important at the beginning to build rapport or be in sync and then disengage as soon as you know you are because now you're entering this world of doing that over and over. What you want to do is as soon as you're disengaged, most likely the other person will disengage in some type of way as well. And now that you're both disengaged in a certain level, you can sync up again. You can build rapport again. The position that you would like to be in is that you're leading the way. So what I mean by that is you're the one who's syncing rapport and waiting for them to sync back up, then you disengage and then you see them disengage. Then you sync back up and they come and sync back up. What could happen in reality is that let's say you sync back up, they sync back up and then now they disengage first. So they're leading the way now, but you do want to then disengage because the mistake is to try to build rapport, build rapport, because the more you do that, the more they disengage. You see this mistake a lot in slimy, sleazy salespeople where they just keep trying to build rapport. They keep trying to build rapport. And the reason why that doesn't work, as you already know, is that the more they try to build rapport with you, the more you disengage. So if somebody else disengages, you have to actually step back and follow their lead and disengage. Remember that throughout this whole thing, it's fine if you're following their lead at any point. If they disengage, you disengage. If they try to build rapport, you can step in and build rapport as well. So you do want to do that back and forth. Just know that if they're breaking rapport, you break rapport. If they sync up, you sync up. And maybe you want to break rapport as soon as you sync up and then they break rapport. So you want to do this dance. Quick pro tip, when you break rapport or when you build rapport, you want to do it to the degree in which the other person does it. At least somewhere in that range. Because if somebody break rapport too much and the dynamic is too harsh, then it, that might break rapport so much that there's no more conversation anymore and you end on nothing being done. So definitely you want to do it to the degree in which the other individual is doing it. Now that you're in the game and you're sinking and disengaging, sinking and disengaging, you want to do it up until the other person seeks to sink with you more than three times. So what I mean by this is you are sinking in a rapport built and you break rapport. And if they take a step forward by trying to build rapport with you, trying to come into an agreement with you, trying to lean in, right? All of these things that were talked about, verbal or body language, then, you disengage a little bit, boom, boom. And they try to, again, build rapport with you. If they do that three times, wrap it up, wrap it up and end on a note of building rapport. And so this goes into step number four, very, very important. You want to wait until three times that they built rapport with you. There's no science to this. So if it's two times, great. If it's four times, cool. But in general, I just want to give you a general number that tends to work, which is the magic number of three. Let's say the example is that you want to go see a particular movie with your friend and they're already agreeing with you. Okay, you know what? Fine, let's go see this movie. It makes no sense to then disengage from them. Just agree with them and you want to end on a note of rapport built because now they are in agreement with whatever direction that you wanted to go in. So you want to end with a built rapport. Oh, great. That sounds great. Let's go book the tickets. So that's step number four is whatever your goal is when you reach it and when they're in agreement with it, you want to end on rapport built because essentially you want to psychologically reward them for them giving you the outcome that you ultimately wanted. Now, this doesn't always go in this way. So let's say, for example, they said, no way, I do not want to see this movie. I just never happening. And you're very adamant about seeing this movie and you don't want to compromise. Okay, great. Then you have to end on a broken rapport. Now, this is very hard for a lot of people. And of course, if it's something as silly as a movie, it doesn't make that much sense. But let's just say you are negotiating your salary. You have to be willing to step away. If you're not willing to end on a broken rapport and say, you know what? I guess we can't work things out here and walk away. That is ending a conversation and negotiation with a broken rapport. That is the only way you can have your power and 
potentially reach to your outcome. You have to also accept the fact that you might not be able to reach the outcome. And if you want to compromise, that's up to you. But just know that if you're not willing to end on a broken rapport, you might not be able to reach that outcome. Oftentimes, if they see that, wow, this person is serious and they want to sync back up with you. So this is them trying to build rapport back up with you. They might say, look, you know what? Let's, let's do this. Let's, let's work something out here. Right. And then you can go ahead and perceive that. And if it does work to the outcome that you would want, you want to end on a built rapport. This is the hardest part. I think, especially as women, and I can speak for myself, we tend to want to end with a built rapport. We tend to want to say, well, I'm sorry it didn't work out. And I, I guess that's it. And then you walk away. That, that's so wrong. And what I really admire in a lot of people who are savages in the corporate industry, women or men, they are not afraid to end on a broken rapport. They're not afraid to show that I don't care for you right now. I don't care for this plan. I don't care for this project and I'm going to actively show it because that's the only way that the outcome can actually lean in your direction. And if the negotiation process or the power play process ends on that note, you have to be able to walk away on a broken rapport. This is something you need to exercise. This is something you need to do on a daily basis and be able to step away without giving a little smile without well, I don't want to make the person feel bad. And I 100% understand how that feels. My goodness gracious, especially as a woman, I always just want people to feel good at the end of our interaction, even if I don't feel that great at the end of the interaction, which is the same reason why there's a lot of sexual harassment in corporate world because women tend to want to not be so pushed. They don't want to push them away. They want to end on a positive note, but I really encourage women and men because now men are starting to do this as well is to not end on a positive note when it's, it's not a positive note. Just don't be afraid to end on a, what you called a negative note or a broken rapport note in order to get what you need, get what you need and go to where you want to go. So I really highly encourage this. I have a video on 50 ways to say no. If you're interested in that, just to exercise you breaking rapport, you saying no, you disagreeing, because that is a muscle we have to psychologically exercise if you're not used to it, if you're a people pleaser like myself, and we have to actively train to break out of that. All right, I'll link that video down below. And if this was helpful to you at all, this is a basic framework. Of course, there are nuances, just to let you know. I, I know people always just, I don't know, sometimes people really get on me in the comment area, but yes, there are nuances and there are caveats to this, but in general, most likely than not, this is the general framework that tends to work well. There's a time and place for everything and breaking rapport is a powerful tool if you let it be. So I hope that was helpful on power plays and how to break rapport, when to do it, and how you can use it to your advantage. Comment below, let me know how you thought about this video. And if you want videos like this in the future, definitely let me know. Hit the subscribe button if you like to know subjects like these in the future. This is Lady Tina Leader in the social school. I will see you on the next video.